Amanda. I'm Ben. We're about to say welcome to our channel. Today watching Demon Slayer Season 4, Episode 5. Last episode, leading off into this episode, it seems like we are going to be trained by Mitsuri, but also we are given the title name for this episode, which makes me think a lot of Genya. Really? Yeah. Oh, honestly, I can understand that. I've been wondering if we were ever going to be training at the same time as, as like any Zenitsu of maybe and Osuke the or Genya. more main characters yeah. in the Demon Slayer core. Uh, so that could be really cool. I don't really know what uh, Mitsuri's training in terms of like how Tanjiro will fare with like the flexibility. Will it be like how he was with Muichiro, where he was kind of trying to be like, hey, smile, and everyone will be better at, you know, handling your harshness? I feel like it will be more of the same in the sense that Tanjiro will do exceedingly well compared to everybody else and then be sent on his way. You ready? Yeah. Sweet. Long time. <laughs> Mitsuri's in the cutting edge of culinary invention within this world. Oh my goodness. Is this how she's feeding all of the other demon slayers that are training here? Delicious. If she's a bad cook, I will be so- okay. Whew. Man, I hope Rengoku got to experience this. Hell, maybe Rengoku is the one who taught Mitsuri how to make pancakes. Maybe. I have a feeling that we all have matching pink training outfits. Yeah, And definitely. I'm super excited about that. Who do you think the strongest Hashira is? Uh, Giyome. Yeah? Yeah. Shinazugawa is definitely he's, up there, I feel like. He's up there but... for me. I think he's the strongest. I, I have a feeling that he is. But Shinizagawa probably comes in really close. Mitsuri's crow. Oh, oh my goodness! My God. <laughs> I love it. I mean, she dressed up the crow, so it makes sense. Tanjiro's just like living his best life. I don't think the crow is living its best life. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Power move. I bet Inosuke would be amazing at it. <gasps> Did we already get through <laughs> training with Mitsuri? It was just one time. It was just the one time. The leg shaking. Oh no, jealousy? Please. Oh, it oh, is jealousy! No. <laughs> Win him over, Tanjiro. <laughs> it's Mitsuri's fault, really. <laughs> What? The fuck? What? He's sadistic. Oh, no. <laughs> you could say that. The crime of weakness. <laughs> the crime of annoying me. Oh, not a real sword. Good. Tanjiro. 
block everybody out. <laughs> so slow. Yeah? Oh. This is a pretty efficient <laughs> test, I would say. It's a bit fucked up. It's fucked up, but I get the message. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I see what it's testing. この可哀想な大使たちの間を抜いて、イグロさんの攻撃が来る。おお。持ってるのは同じ木刀なのに、どうしてこんなに曲がるんだ。狭い隙間でも塗るりと入ってくる攻撃。ああ。まさにヘビ
So is this just like a he beats everyone up every day? Is that what this training is? <laughs> Jesus. Just stamina, stamina, stamina. <laughs> Jesus. The fact that he does this all day during the day and then still goes and trains at night with right? Igro. Oh. Intro. <laughs> ボキュも使えないようなやつが剣士を名乗ってんじゃねえ。そんな。と、俺は兄貴に謝りたくて。頑張れ、ケンヤ。ケンヤ負けるな。うせろ。そんな。俺。鬼を食ってまで。なんだ
I love that Anoska is here, <laughs> like, <laughs> already. It's so interesting. Like, obviously, last season, we had a lot of moments with Genya that were heartfelt, whether his backstory or his reactions to Mitsuri and stuff like that. But he still, like, was such a badass that it feels so wild to see him, like, a sad puppy. He felt like a little brother. I know. <laughs> You're so right. Like, the feelings that I, like was witnessing from him and how he seemed he seemed so small i know it, which is terrible like, it, it's so sad because it's like like a cat showing you like i i don't want to fight like you can kill me if you want i just want to show you that i'm sorry and i love you <laughs> it's like wanting acceptance you know surrendering genya just wants to apologize yes まだいたのか。まさかカンロジにまたちょっかいを。違いますでは大将こそこそ噂話。イグロさんの連れている蛇の名前は。おお。終わったならさっさと行け。Tell us more about how he feels about Kanroji. いや、でも。I don't think we need him. I just want to tell us. Strongest of the Demon Slayer core. The strongest! Yeah. Okay, that was Demon Slayer Season 4, Episode 5. <sighs> I wanted Igoro to come around to the point of being like, I understand why Kanroji is so smitten with Tanjiro, but not in that way. I have nothing to worry about. Yeah. We briskly walked through three different Hashira trainings in yeah. this one episode. Yeah. Which feels a little bit insane to have done that. Yeah. Definitely wasn't the structure that I was expecting, but it definitely didn't lend to having too much time of Tanjiro coming to mutual understandings with newer characters like Iguro or yeah. Shinazagawa. Regardless of how rough training with Shinigazawa was to the point of it being suspended, right? I feel as if Mitsuri's training was the max min harshest training you could get. It's like once you once you experience this, that's all that's needed and then you can move on. You just need to be flexible, yeah. that's it. I loved how like proud Tanjiro was in his outfit. Everybody else is so like shy and embarrassed about it, but he was just Owning up to it. And I love how, like, they were all like, oh, yay, she's going to stretch with us. And then she stretched with them and they were like, ah! <laughs> yeah. And even Tanjiro was like, oh, my God, that's hell. <laughs> this is such a fascinating, like, season so far. We're five episodes in and it definitely is just, ob it's obviously training, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we've, we've gotten a lot of emotion out of it as well. But I don't know if I've quite watched a show that's had such like a emphasis on the training without it being like interrupted or like it being turned into something else and i really appreciate that it's like obviously it's very hard for us to be able to see like a that growth within tanjiro right now because we're not getting like a physical a physical like representation of how strong he is getting through this training, mm -hmm. but through his conversation with Zenitsu this episode, he's like, it's obviously paying off. Like, you were able to go one-on-one -on -one with him for quite a bit. Right. It's um really interesting to see this sort of pacing in terms of a training arc. Like, it, this episode in particular, obviously we've already said, it, it goes through three different separate trainings, but also we're getting not only three different Hashira, well, and then four at the end, very, very end, but we're also getting Zenitsu and Genya and then Inosuke at the very end. We're yeah. getting all of these characters kind of having check-ins here in this one episode. And so this training, it's like, we're getting a little more of the comedy aspect of Demon Slayer. We're getting a little more of the interpersonal relationships. We're getting a little check-ins with everyone. But what we're also getting in terms of training, which is why I always have faith in Tondro and have never felt weird about him being able to pull through in the end of a battle, mm -hmm. is because we see what he's learning. Yeah. Even if it's being showcased to us in somewhat of a quick succession or even comedy, 
we still are seeing exactly what he's working on in that moment and what he is practicing, what he is learning. And to at least to me as a viewer, it fuels like more of an acceptance that this character isn't just OP because he's OP and he's being written that yeah. way. He's like training these specific things that are definitely going to help him excel later on. I think that even though as fucked up as it was, Igoro's training might be my favorite training so far that we've gotten to experience from Ahashira. I think it's like very practical. I mean, even thinking back to season one with Rui, right? And be, uh, having Rui's mom use Demon Slayer core members as like puppets, mm -hmm. but they were still alive, you know? Like the idea of having to cut around or fight with, you know, your own teammates being used against you, whether it's as direct as puppets or more indirect, like I like a situation that I'm assuming an upper rank could make just to make it harder on somebody like Tanjiro. I could see Igoro's training paying off tenfold. Igoro's training makes sense for his kind of viewpoint about the current like Demon Slayer core members that he's training like that there might be like a few people out of that group that will actually make an impact or actually get him somewhere closer yeah to developing a mark and so then the thought becomes basically what Tengen did at the last day of his training which was Tanjiro lead these demon slayers yeah. in an assault against me and and that's what Tanjiro did is that he it became the demon slayers realized oh as long as we can be a support to you, you can land the finishing blow. And Igoro's training was kind of like, okay, imagine you are that strongest person on the battlefield. There's tons of other people that are your allies, but you still need to fight your hardest. You're being attacked. Yeah. But the battlefield is full of people that you don't want to... You're swinging a sharp object <laughs> around. Like... You need to make sure that you are hitting uh, an enemy and not accidentally yeah. injuring your allies. Uh, so next episode, the strongest of the Demon Slayer core. I have two inter interpretations when in a TV, sh a TV show we're bringing up like the strongest. You could say easily like they're the most powerful on every front or like if everything's taken into consideration, this person would beat the rest of the Hashira or strongest in terms of lifting, you know, like actual just muscular strength. Mm. I'm able to swing harder than you. And that could be, you know, not necessarily conveying that same strongest in terms of one-on-one. -on -one. Like one one-on-one -on -one could beat you even though that you have more muscle strength than another person. But I wonder what they're going to lead with. You're right. Like what is the strongest about? Like what are they the strongest at? Are they the strongest at defeating demons? Is that what it is? Like, that's a great question to open up. But something that has me worried about this idea of like this per like a person being identified as the strongest in the Demon Slayer core. I feel like when you get action anime or an anime where we're following this main character into battles and training, eventually this character is supposed to be the one, the one that defeats. Moves on the one that inevitably becomes the strongest or is supported on their way to being the strongest, which always lends me to be worried about the their, people that are currently life. the strongest. Yeah, you're in a position where you're either gonna somehow, at least with other anime taking into account other storylines, you're gonna lose your powers, you're not gonna be able to fight. Like Tengen is not currently fighting, he's retired. Like, so it leads me to start being like, is something going to happen to this character that is being identified as the strongest so that either they are no longer the strongest? Yeah, oh, that's positive. Uh, our main character is able to surpass them in strength. Cool. Nothing has to happen to them. Or do we have to knock them down a peg and make it so they can't fight and make, make our odds worse? Or like they beat our strongest Hashira. Mm -hmm. Now the fuck, what are we supposed to do? And the, and, yeah. the morale, yeah. what it would do to morale for the strongest of the Demon Slayer core to be the one that's, true. that's attacked. That, it just, identifying someone as like, this is the pinnacle of our strength yeah. is 
worrisome for me as a viewer. Do you think Shino, Shinozagawa and Genya and their relationship will be touched on more this season? Yes. I feel like because they finally had an on-screen interaction that we were witness to, and because what we got with Genya last season and actually getting the past, and that Tandro has now finally had another reunion with Shinozagawa, I think that that relationship is at least going to have a few more on-screen or off-screen moments that are talked about in a flashback. I'm worried that we won't get it now. I'm worried that we won't get it until, like, Genya shows firsthand how strong he is up against a demon or, you know, like... On the bat... Exactly. Like, you're bringing up something that we are kind of also, like... I guess would be thought of as a narrative trope or something. A character has something left unsaid and they haven't been able to fully reconcile with someone they really care about. And then on the battlefield, like that is a moment of being like, oh, the regrets, you know? So that would definitely be on my mind that maybe something between the brothers wouldn't happen until like dire stakes are happening. It was an interesting reaction to Genya being like, I've even eaten the demons. Like, it yeah, almost like... He was pissed. Yeah, like, we're getting the reassurance that Genya can't use breathing techniques, right? Mm-hmm. But upon, like, him being the one to bring up, like, I've even been eating the demons. It's almost like there was a miscommunication for, between the two that Genya got that message from she you know like it was like it's almost like the way that it was delivered it was genya wanting a positive response from specifically oh, eating yeah, demons definitely. and not you he, know i think it was more so he wanted a positive response that i've been doing something freaking crazy in order to try to survive and get stronger like i've been willing to uh, go to any length to be able to continue fighting and surviving. I even ate demons. To I go even on ate demons, and my like current feeling is that Shinizugawa, there is a brotherly love there. I think without a doubt, like that is something that's still underneath, mm. and I think that it's more so like. I think his reject, at least at the moment, his rejection of his little brother is more so both like a pride thing from their last interaction but i would say also more so a protection thing yeah like don't get involved little brother he your your little brother is joining the demon slayer he can't use breathing techniques you're constantly trying to get him to quit being a demon slayer you saw what happened to your mom i'm sure shinizugawa is terrified of genya becoming a demon and shinizugawa having to put him down and he's eating demons that idea that you are interact like shinisaga was the one that picked up nezuko and stabbed her like he is not going to be having a super lovable reaction to what we've seen genya look like and appear to be in last season man i love tanjiro being like i haven't forgiven you like you're like same and he's saying it with like such a smile on his face she's was like so taken aback by that he's like you got some nerve so good (laughs) Uh, you brought up, like, a funny comment during the episode, um, the bubbles in the bathtub. Yeah, you were kind of yeah. like, oh, I wonder how the voice actor, like, did this. Yeah. And I just imagine, like, them having a tub of water and the voice actor just being like... <laughs> I would think that that's it, because it was so good. It was so that, good. Yeah. You have to be so talented to do it without that bucket of water. Right. That bath bit with the cuts was so um, real. Yeah. Like, it's... I could feel it. I could mm-hmm. just feel that idea that, like, oh, I could see their bodies are covered in cuts. And I could just imagine how that would sting and hurt so bad. I'm with you. I'm excited to get Inosuke next episode. Inosuke being my favorite character, I am also very excited to get more Inosuke. But I also am sad that we are done with Igoro and Kanroji. Yeah. Because... The idea that he was, like, how he reacted to reading her letter. I think he needs to focus on the fact that he got a letter, you know? (laughs) Like, that in itself is telling. As soon as Mitsuri was like, Tantra is so adorable, I was like, oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. All right, that's all I have you. Yeah, I just want more of that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. (laughs) Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.